According to a House Judiciary Committee report on Friday, two-thirds of unaccompanied illegal immigrant children seeking asylum have been approved to stay in the U.S. this year so far. But where are they going to stay? After initially being turned down by the Department of Homeland Security, last week, my next guest finally toured a facility that houses immigrant children in his own congressional district there in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Congressman Jim Bridenstine joins me now. Congressman, it's nice to have you with me today. Always, Governor. Thank you for having me. You know, let me start with the fact you try to go on July 1st, go into a facility in your district. You're a sitting U.S. congressman. They told you you couldn't go in and see a federal facility that you have oversight for. Did you, I mean, seriously, were you tempted just to blow the doors open and say, I'm going in anyway? And why didn't you? Well, you know, that was, you know, my initial reaction, but uh, we thought better of it. Uh, we asked for the, uh, we wanted to go up the chain of command. Uh, we asked for somebody that we could talk to. Uh, they gave us a phone number for the Deputy Director of Communications for HHS. Uh, that gentleman would not take my phone call, but his assistant told me that he'd be happy to com communicate via email. Uh, but eventually, uh, we were able to get access. It was 12 days later. We got access on, on July 12th. Um, and, and it was eye-opening. Uh, a lot of my worst fears were confirmed. A lot of the children in these facilities have been abused. Um, and it's not that they're being abused by anybody in the facility, and that, that's never been the case. The, the situation here is a lot of these children in these facilities have parents or relatives in the United States that are already here illegally. And then these parents pay coyotes down in Mexico uh, to, to have their children uh, smuggled into the United States. Unfortunately, in northern Mexico, since the United States doesn't control the southern border the way it ought to, uh, in northern Mexico, the border is controlled by transnational criminal organizations. So these coyotes that have possession of these children have to get across the border. And in order to do so, they have to pay the right organized crime syndicate uh, to get across the border. So these children, in many cases, uh, end up being taken hostage and, and the parents in the United States end up having to pay more money. In some cases, the children disappear. Um, they, they, there are recent accounts of mass graves in northern Mexico. Um, and of course, some children just get sold into the slave trade. The crisis here is that uh, a lot of these, these parents in the United States illegally don't understand the danger of having their children brought to the United States by coyotes and transnational criminal organizations. And because of this, the children are being made to suffer. Congressman, what exactly did you see when you walked in there? Uh, and, and do you think that maybe some things were cleaned up in that 11-day period between your first attempt and when you finally got in? I don't know if things were cleaned up. Uh, I can tell you that the folks that I met inside that facility had a big heart for children. I can tell you they had 80 medical professionals that were in that facility. Um, there were numerous counts of scabies where the children were quarantined, other counts of, of fevers. Uh, clearly the children that had made it across the border uh, through the, the most difficult trek um, had in many cases been traumatized. Uh, there, were, there were cases of children, uh, accounts of, of suicide attempts inside the facility. Um, but I can tell you that the people that were working in there were very dedicated to making sure that the children were well cared for, that the health concerns of the children were met, and of course that includes the mental health concerns. Um, and again, I think the biggest message that we need to make sure everybody understands, we keep hearing the administration say that, that people are fleeing crime and poverty down in El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala, and it is true crime and poverty are bad down there. I've spent a lot of time in El Salvador as somebody who used to do counter drug operations uh, in the Navy as a pilot. Um, but I can tell you, when I was there two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, crime and poverty were bad then. Uh, what's new now is that uh, the president has articulated that he'd like uh, people who come to the United States uh, to, to be legalized, and he'd like to make them, in fact, citizens. Um, and that word has gotten out down south. And if you talk to the children and hear their, their reports and their accounts, they believe that if they make it across our border, uh, they're going to be uh, they're going to be given legal status and eventually made citizens. We appreciate your being here. Thank you very much for joining us and giving us the update.